This program is brought to you by Stanford University. Please visit us at stanford.edu. I almost always begin with the same sermon. about, especially when teaching about quantum mechanics or relativity, and the sermon is always the same. It's the fact that we as animals have inherited through the process of evolution certain intuitive ways of thinking about the physical world. Uh, and if you don't believe it, you think that maybe um, ordinary animals are not physicists, you watch a lion chasing an antelope and you notice that that lion, the minute that the antelope, that the relative velocity between the antelope and the lion changes sign, the lion just stops dead. Somehow he did some calculation, or she, it's usually a she, the lion, did some calculation, some physics calculation involving some very complicated concepts of velocity, direction, all kinds of uh, complicated computations like that. Uh, a, uh, a primitive uh, Cro-Magnon man, not a Cro-Magnon man, a Neanderthal, who comes to a cave and sees that the cave is blocked by a boulder and tries to push the boulder and can't push the boulder, decides to aim his body that way. Hmm? Why? So that he gets a bigger component of force in that direction. Has he ever heard of force? Has he ever heard of components? Where did he get this idea of components? Did he uh, know about sines and cosines? Yes, somehow he did know about sines and cosines. These are things which were inherited, uh, biological in origin, and they are the basis of our intuitions about physics, our intuitive picture of the world. Much of physics has to do with those things. In fact, all of modern physics, everything in modern physics, has to do with those things which are beyond the intuitions that we were able to get uh, from the ordinary world. It has to do with, with ranges of parameters which are way outside the range of parameters that humans or animals ever experienced. For example, it's not too surprising that human beings didn't know how to deal with velocities approaching the speed of light. That they got the wrong ideas about how to add velocities when nobody in 1900 had ever, probably had never, probably had never moved faster than 50 or 60 or 100 miles an hour. Well, there are, they probably did when they were falling off cliffs, but they didn't live to talk about it. Uh, maybe they got up to 200 miles an hour, maybe. But nobody ever had experienced anything like the velocities approaching the speed of light. And so it was not surprising that their intuitions, that their way of thinking about adding velocities and so forth, the theory of relativity, was, uh, and, and how you synchronize clocks, all that stuff, all that good stuff that Einstein did, that it was outside the framework of their ability to think about through intuitive pictures, through intuitive mathematics. 